Welcome. My name is Jeff Everhart, and in this short tutorial, we're going to talk about how to autofill a Google document from a Google Form submission using Google Apps Script. To get started, I've created a folder in my Google Drive called Autofill Google Doc from Form to contain all of our project resources for this project. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and just create a form. And we'll go ahead and rename this form. Autofill Google Doc. And then we'll add three options to the form that will all be short answer. The first one we'll do is first name. I'll add another short answer for last name. And then we'll add one final one for title or position. Make that one short. Short answer as well. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the responses tab and create a spreadsheet um, to attach all of the responses to. In that autofill Google Doc as well. Click create. Now that we have our spreadsheet created, I'm going to hop back out to our Google Drive folder. And from here, I'm going to create a Google Doc that is going to serve as our template that we are going to populate data into. So I'm going to go ahead and just rename this document to template. And then this is going to be a fairly simple template. So we'll just go ahead and insert uh, three table columns. And then what we're going to do here inside of our template, and this Google Doc template can be as simple or as complex as you like, but what we're going to do is we're going to include what we call replacement tags. So this is going to be a string of text that Google Apps Script is going to look for when evaluating our Google Doc. And this is where um, those values in the replacement tags will be replaced with data from our form later. So what I'm going to do, what I recommend you do for these replacement tags is use two curly braces. So what we'll do is just go ahead and create one for our first name, tab over, do one for our last name, and then one final one for title. And it's worth noting that the text inside of these curly braces can be arbitrary. It can be really anything. It doesn't have to correspond directly to the form fields that we've created um, because we're going to go ahead and tell uh, this Google document later on in our Google Apps Script code which, uh, what text to look for. So let's go ahead and start that now. So to get started with our Google Apps Script project, I'm going to hop back into the spreadsheet that was created uh, to accept form responses. I'm going to click on Tools and click on the Script Editor menu to open up the Script Editor. So the first thing I'm going to do once I've created this script project is I'm actually going to rename this function to autofill Google Doc from form, just so we can be really specific about what's happening here. And then since this is a form event submission, um, we're going to get uh, this event parameter that we're going to use to pull values out of the form. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to save this and give this a project, project title, Google Doc, and we'll go ahead and save that. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull our variables out of this form event. So we'll go ahead and declare a variable, call that timestamp, set that equal to e.values, which is reference to an array of form values. Um, and then we're going to get the zero index of that array. So that is going to reference um, this spreadsheet. And if you're familiar with working with Google Apps Script, you know that um, most of the data comes in JavaScript arrays, which are zero indexed. And so zero in this JavaScript array actually points to the first column right here. So we're going to go ahead and we've got time timestamp. We're going to get first name. We'll declare another variable, set that equal to e values. And that's going to be the first index. Our last name equals e dot values. And then we're going to set that equal to two. And then var, we we'll had title, that's going to be e.values in that third index or the fourth row in the spreadsheet. And we'll go ahead and just give that a save. Yep, check our spreadsheet just to make sure we've got all the values we want. 
Um, and so the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get a reference to our template file. So I'm going to go ahead and declare another variable. And this is going to be called template file. Set that equal to the drive app class. And then we're going to call the get file by ID method on that. So what's that? what that's going to do is that's going to go out to your Google Drive. It's going to get any one of your Google Drive files by ID. So what we'll do is we'll flip over to our document template. And then in the URL here, we're going to grab this really long string of characters, copy that, this is that the ID, and we need to make sure we need we get the whole thing, everything between those uh, forward slashes. And we're going to come back over, just open up some quotation marks, and pass that string in there. So now we've got a reference to our template file. Um, from there, we're also going to want to get a reference to the folder that we want to create um, our new populated template in. And so what we'll do there is we'll actually cop back out to our top level Google Drive folder for this project. And I'm actually going to create a new folder for um, populated templates. Go ahead and create that. And then we'll click into that folder. And again, we're going to grab the ID of that folder so that we can use it in our script. So copy that. And then we'll get template response folder, declare a new variable, we're going to use that a similar method. So we're going to call drive app dot get folder by ID, again, open some quotation marks, pass in that folder ID, and we've got a reference to our template folder. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is see we have one template document, but we're going to want to create as many copies of that as form submissions come in. So what we're going to do is using our template folder variable, we're going to go ahead and, or sorry, template file variable. We're going to go ahead and make a reference to that and use a method on that called make copy. We'll go ahead and back up just so you can see the autocomplete here is generally pretty good. Um, so you can see I've got a couple of different options for make copy. And what I'm going to use is the last one where we pass in a string for the name and then a folder that is the destination. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And what we'll do to name this file is we're going to do some string concatenation. So what we'll do the, do here is we'll name this last name and then plus comma. And then we'll do another plus and then we'll reference that first name variable. And then for our destination, we're going to go ahead and put it in the template response folder. And since we're going to need to use this copy, let's go ahead and actually make this a variable. So we'll just say var copy equals the result of this template file dot make copy method, which is going to give us a reference to the new file that we've just created. Um, and then what we're going to want to do, since this is a drive file, um, we're going to actually want to open this up with the Google document app. So we'll declare another variable and call this doc. And then we'll set that equal to copy. I'm sorry, no, we're going to call the document app, document app dot open by ID. And then we're going to use the copy to get ID. So what this does is we're passing in copy, calling this method on copy of getting ID, which is going to pass the, the drive file ID to the document app. So it knows which, which file that we're, we're looking to open as a Google document. So from there, what we're going to do is now that we've got this open in the document app, um, we're going to want to essentially open up the body of this document, reach inside of it, look for these particular strings of text, and then replace them with the variables that we've defined up here. Uh, so to do that, uh, we're going to declare another variable and we're going to call that body. And this is going to be equal to the document body. So that's just going to be doc dot get body. That's going to return us a document body. And so then on that body, there is a method called replace text. So we can do that and we can see that it takes two parameters, the search pattern, and then what we want to replace it with. So I'm going to go ahead and call that. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste this three times since we're going to be replacing three separate pieces of text in that document. We'll go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back over to our template. Instead of rewriting this, I'm just going to copy and paste these strings of text in here for our search pattern. 
So we'll do that. And then we're going to want to replace that with our first name variable from our form submission event. So we'll go ahead and continue and do that with our last name. We'll set that equal to last name. And then we'll pass in title. Okay, so what that's gonna do is it's gonna get our document we're going to open up the document, get the body. On the body of the document, we're going to call these replace text methods to swap out those placeholders with the values passed in from our form. And then lastly, what we're going to want to do is to make these changes stick. We're going to want to call a method on the document called save and close. So we'll go ahead and click that, so give it a save. Um, and from here, we're ready to give this script a test run by submitting a form. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back out. We'll go ahead and preview our form. And then we'll Jeff Everhart. And then I'm a web developer. And we'll go ahead and click Submit. Oh, and I forgot one key, one key part to make this work. Uh, so we're going to see we got a form submission there. Um, but if we check back in our Google... Google folders up, we can see that no, nothing in this populated templates folder, and that's to be expected. The last thing that we need to do um, after writing this, this function to do the copying for us is we need to add a trigger to this project. So what I'm gonna do is go to the edit menu, current projects triggers, and that's gonna open up a different menu, and I'm going to click add trigger. And so what I, what I get, I get here a lot of options. So first of all, I get to choose which function I wanna run and I want to run our autofill Google Doc from form function. Um, I would generally, for most uh, casual app script developers, this is always going to be head. Um, then what I'm going to do here is select an event source. So what I'm going to do in this particular instance is the event source is going to be our spreadsheet. And then the event type is going to be on form submit. So what that means is that when somebody submits the form, this trigger is going to run. It's going to pull the values from the spreadsheet and pass them into this autofill Google Doc from form function as this variable E that we reference throughout our script. Um, the last thing I would do is modify this failure notification setting option to notify you immediately of any app script failures. Um, so we can go ahead and click save there. And then, right, it's gonna ask me to authenticate and authorize um, this application. And I'm just gonna click through Google's scary stuff and click allow. And then once that trigger is saved, we can hop back out to our form, submit another response. And then we'll go ahead and check our spreadsheet. And then let's go ahead and hop back in here and give this a refresh see if we have a populated Google document. And sure enough, there we go. If we look at our populated template, we can see that uh, the name of the file was this concatenation of last name comma first name. Uh, and then if we look inside of the document, we can see that each, each place there was a placeholder variable that got swapped out with um, a variable that we defined in our Google Apps Script code. Um, so like I said before, this is a super simple example of populating a, a Google document via a Google form, but this form can really be, or I'm sorry, this document rather can really be as complex as you want. So you could have a very nice formatted document with lots of different fields that you're populating. Um, and all we need to do to make that work is just ensure that each one of these placeholders is unique in the document. Cause right, we're going in here and we're using that, that method body.replace text, it's looking for the first instance of this text, this particular text pattern, and then replacing it with whatever it is. So that's why it's always a good practice to use these curly braces. Um, and then generally, you know, just make sure that this, this particular pattern doesn't appear anywhere else. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching um, and stay tuned. And be sure to check out other tutorials I've got on my YouTube channel or some links below to check out this code example on my website. Thanks.